Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Tech Talks, which we do every few weeks with the Phyllis Ferris of SIPAC. And today we're going to talk about things that have popped up, if you will, uh, after the fire in Maui. Um, there are new scams, new, exciting, creative, and worrisome scams in Maui. So, Attila, what do you got? Oh, well, <laughs> first of all, Jay, thanks for having me here. And, and I appreciate having any opportunity to to spread the word that, uh, you know, even though the fires are hopefully subsided, uh, the scammers are just getting started. So uh, in much the same way that we've all been glued to the TVs past few weeks, uh, watching the, uh, the you know, the devastation unfold, it's uh, also been something that the scammers have been doing. They've been watching their TVs as well and wondering about new ways to take advantage of people. <clears throat> and we've talked about a couple of things uh, in the past few weeks uh, most notably, right after the uh, the fires, uh, there were these FEMA scams that came out. Uh, there were there were folks that uh, were and unfortunately lost everything, and they were getting phone calls uh, from uh, either some opportunist uh, investors who were offering them as little as say sixty thousand dollars for a piece of their land uh, to uh, offering them a uh, an expedited method of getting their FEMA uh, funding uh, if they would just simply pay them a small fee of, you know, either a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. <clears throat> Both of these, of course, uh, not likely legitimate, uh, but uh, there are these kind of scammers and these are kind of old hat techniques uh, that are now being applied towards Maui victims. And the reason that they're being applied is because that they work and uh, they wouldn't work if folks weren't uh, unaware of them. So, what we're trying to do is bring a little bit of awareness to these types of scams and how uh, you know victims are being taken advantage of. Now, what I find interesting is that there's lawyers all over what happened in Maui. Lawyers filing suits uh, uh, to hold various organizations and individuals accountable for what happened. Uh, the blame game, if you will. But, um, you know, I'd like to see some lawyers chase these scoundrels. I'd like to see some government agencies chase these scoundrels. They're are predatory. They need to be investigated and prosecuted wherever they are in the country. Um, so I think that the legal establishment should go after them too. Well, you know, these guys have been doing it a long time. Uh, they're highly organized, well-funded. They make a lot of money doing this and numerous other scams across the world. So I'm I'm not really uh <laughs> hopeful that this is going to go away anytime soon but at least if we can get the word out and let folks know that there are these scammers out there do not give information uh <laughs> or should i say do not give any payment information to anyone who's claiming to be from a federal or state authority right so a fema person will not ask you for your credit card number that's a big red flag right there and uh, unfortunately you know we did talk about this a few weeks ago how uh, there was a lot of personal information being put onto Facebook. Uh, obviously, there are folks that were looking for each other, for family members, for loved ones. Uh, that information is now being harvested and being used for these scams. So just be aware, if you did put your phone number or phone numbers of, of your family members onto, the, uh, onto social media, there's a good chance it's been scraped and they're using that against you. Scoundrels. Um, you know, uh, I, I can also make a little bit of a prediction in terms of what we're going to be seeing in the next weeks and months. And, you know, obviously we have, uh, you know, several uh, hundred, if not, uh, you know, over a thousand people that are still unaccounted for. Uh, we anticipate that there's going to be uh, those impersonating private investigators uh, who are going to say, look, you know, if, if you're not getting answers about you're missing uh, loved ones, then for a fee, uh, we'll do what we can to expedite that process or, or get those answers for you. And that, again, is also probably going to be fake, right? They're not going to be able to do anything more than you can in terms of uh, finding out this information. Everyone is working as fast as they can, uh, as safely as they can. Uh, but, you know, this is uh, one of those um, hopefully once-in-a-lifetime disasters. And, uh, you know, the, the best we can do is uh, is let them do their work and have them find whatever DNA they can to help notify the, the families of those affected. What I find interesting is that it's not only if somebody knocks on your door, the extent you still have a door, 
Um, but they'll try to reach you by phone or by email or text. And that's how the impersonation is more likely done, right? Well, and that's the thing is that now service is becoming restored, uh, mostly cellular service, uh, obviously critical infrastructure, uh, you know, wire in the ground, all that's gone, uh, everything from uh, power to data. And uh, in fact, some, uh, you know, some, if we have contaminated lines, you know, uh, you know, water lines in the ground, sewer lines, that kind of stuff, uh, that some of that may need to be replaced as well. So this effort could take quite a long time. And, uh, you know, telecommunications being restored as the first step is great, but it also means that the scammers can now get in touch with the victims. And that's what we don't want. Yeah. So there's happen. a whole sequence of things to think about here. Number one is if you suspect, and we should talk about the, the points of suspicion, if you suspect there's a scammer onto you, uh, then you're not going to give them any information at all. Um, but what do you do? You just hang up the phone or uh, ignore the uh, the text? Or do you report that? Or do you call the police? Or or do you call FEMA? Or do you call, you know, the, the state uh, attorney general or, or the Maui prosecutor, assuming the Maui prosecutor is still in business? Um, or do you just forget about it? What do you do? Uh, so there is a well-defined path for this. So first things first, if you find that there's a scammer on the line, hang up the phone right there. And you know what? It's okay to be rude. You don't. You can cut them off mid-sentence. Not a problem. That's okay. Next thing you want to do is call the police. Now, local police uh, has a phone number. But you know what? If you don't know what that phone number is, no problem. Call 911 and say it's a police non-emergency. Then they'll collect, connect you to the local police department. At that point, you can let them know, hey, I'm getting scam calls. And this is what they said. And this is the phone number that they called from. You've well, done sometimes your you can't get that phone number. Um, right. I mean, sometimes it's a, uh, it's a phone number without a phone number. And the result there is that you don't have any information about the people who are trying to scam you. Uh, you know, I mean, what, I suppose what you could do is, uh, what was your name again? What, where are you calling from? Uh, spell out the name of your organization for me. Um, you know, what is your phone? What is your email? Lots of questions. But if you ask a lot of questions like that, the likelihood is the fellow is going to hang up on you. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't really help. And not to mention, whatever they give you is going to be fake anyway. Uh, but having some of that caller ID information, that really does help. Uh, there have been some recent changes in the way that voice over IP carriers, uh, you know, transmit phone calls over the Internet uh, that allows uh, for these kind of number spoofing instances to kind of be cut down. Uh, they can stop some of them. Local numbers are also, uh, you know, you're going to see a local number on your phone. Uh, there's no more of this, you know, 1-800 uh, or, you know, call ID blocked, that kind of stuff. It's going to be local numbers. And so those local numbers can be tied to at least an account. Even if the account is fake, then at least there's something they can do to shut it down and, and kind of slow down the process a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's that, interesting, yeah. you know, in the past, I, I made that exact kind of analysis myself. Um, where the number was a local number, however, I gave it some credence. Uh, now I find that a lot of uh, uh, scam and spam calls um, are 808 numbers. I find that very interesting that they managed to get by that part of the, what do you want to call it, suspicious, suspicious elements here. Can you talk about the suspicious elements? So here I am, and I get a call or an email or a text. Um, how... How, how paranoid should I be and what should tip me off? Well, in general, I mean, let, let's just be practical here. Unless you're waiting for a phone call from someone and you recognize the phone number, probably not really worth it to pick it up anyway, right? They can leave a voicemail message. And uh, if you're like me and don't like voicemail, uh, you can fill up your voicemail message, uh, your voicemail account, and then on your greeting, let people know to text you. <laughs> and that's sometimes a good way to kind of filter out you know, those that really want to reach you and which ones don't. Uh, in terms of how this all works, uh, voice over IP carriers uh, can take a, you know, you can buy a, an 808 number uh, for just, you know, maybe a couple dollars and uh, pay per minute to, you know, make calls over that phone number. And the company that is selling that phone number is responsible 
for the activity on that phone number. And uh, so that's why that's why I say if you report that phone number to the police and they can contact the appropriate carrier and ask that that number be shut down or that account be blocked because it is being used for fraudulent purposes for scamming. And uh, obviously, this is not the first time that, uh, you know, HPD has done this. So Mount PD is also very, very capable of doing these kind of activities. So suppose I'm slightly lax, you know, and they get they get in on me and they get some information about me in the scam before I realize, you know, that it's a scammer. What's my exposure? Should I be worried? Am I going to lose my house and car, and my, uh, my, my, my sacred fortune um, and sacred honor? Um, or is it small potatoes? Well, it really depends. I mean, if you're someone, you know, as rich and famous like yourself, then you have more to worry about. Thank you for that. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, if uh, if you're the average kind of person, uh, then you're probably not going to be as much, they're not going to put as much resources into trying to get that kind of uh, stuff out of you. Uh, just know that you're, there's a good chance that a lot of your personally identifiable information or your PII is floating around out there on the dark web anyway, from all the different data breaches that have occurred over the past 10 years. So, um, what they're looking for is the quick and easy buck. And it's strictly a numbers game. So if they're able to, you know, make a thousand phone calls and have two people fall for it, that's a pretty good day for them, for that, for that bad boy. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that criminal could make, you know, hundreds or uh, maybe a few thousand dollars off of those two individuals who get scammed over the course of a day. So it, it is a hundred percent a numbers game and it is a hundred percent smash and grab. How easily can they get the, the money out of them? Uh, this is why things like gift cards are a big red flag. If you ever hear anything, the word gift card, <laughs> uh, that that's a that's a stop right there. In fact, uh, we're li- I was listening to a podcast that's pretty interesting with some cybersecurity guys, and they were saying, you know what? If we just put a hiatus on all gift cards across the entire globe for two years, it'd probably cut out ninety eight percent of all the scammers out there, because that's a method of of moving money that's that's easy. Uh, that anyone has access to. It's it's a lot easier than crypto, um, but it's also a giant red flag. Like wh- who needs gift cards? You know, right? I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get hate mail from the from the gift card association of America, uh, but we don't need any more gift cards. It's fine. You know. <laughs> that, what about what about crypto? I mean, if somebody says, "Look, you know, we can move this a lot faster and provide you with huge benefits." But we need you to send us some crypto. What is that a tip off? It's also a tip off. Yeah, it's the same thing. But uh, you know, in, in order for you to get crypto, sometimes you need a crypto ATM. As far as I know, there are none on Maui, so it'd be pretty difficult for someone to to try to do a, an exchange that way. Uh, but you know, gift cards are available at every Longs and Safeway. Um, you know, we were doing a we were doing a. a an event for like, it was actually for Maui Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we were talking about these kind of scams. And, and it was really funny because as someone was watching, this lady was watching our uh, our presentation. This was during COVID. Her mom runs quickly behind her, out the door, running out the door. She's like, mom, 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 where are you going? Still watching our webinar, right? Oh, I have to run to Long's. I have to get some gift cards because I just got a call from the FBI. And they said that they're going to come and arrest me unless I pay them what I owe in, uh, in taxes in these gift cards. Oh, wow. Meanwhile, we're, we're literally talking at the same time. And and so, <laughs> <laughs> so you can't make this stuff up. It still happens. And these are smart people. This is not, you know, uh, it's just, you know, we're, we're a trusting uh, society here in Hawaii. We try to do what we can to help each other. Um, we respect authority. And because of that, these kind of things happen. Well, it's it's a, it's about desperate people. But I suggest to you that uh, a there's not really a lot of investigation going on. Um, you can't really nail them. The, your True. lawyer can't nail them. They may be here or anywhere in the world with an eight hundred eight yeah. number. Um, and it's going to take. Let me add this: it's going to take a long time before Maui is recovered and rebuilt and reestablished. And then then be tele- telecommunications right now, but. There's a long way to go before people get back in any kind of normality. And what I'm suggesting to you is that uh, these scammers 
are going to be with us for a while. They're not leaving. Uh, and as Maui redevelops itself, there'll be more creative opportunities for them uh, as as time goes by. Am I right? Yep, absolutely. And in the same vein, if if uh, nothing would have happened on Maui, they, they'd still be with us. They'd still be trying to attack uh, those of us who are on the other islands. So uh, the Maui is just a, an example of a disaster that they can they can wave around. They're going to have a higher success rate uh, when there's emotions involved. Uh, when there's uh, you, you know people aren't thinking logically or you know they're thinking emotionally. And whenever emotion gets involved, uh, you know folks who are smart and and well qualified will 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 lose their shirts. Uh, perfect example. You know I, I recently read about a an AI researcher who writes and trains AI and has done so for over 10 years. And he got duped by an AI chatbot who he thought was a real romantic partner that was interested in him. But in truth, for six months or more, he was just chatting with a chatbot that had someone kind of loosely watching it just to make sure it wouldn't say anything uh, that would tip him off. And he ended up going to jail because he he accidentally became uh, involved in some uh, in some um, uh, I think it was a, it was a drug crime or something like they they got him to like move drugs across the border and that's how they caught him. So these kind of stories happen to the most smartest, most qualified people, and it's all because of their emotion gets involved in their you know, mm. in front of their mind. Yeah, going through that whole thing about people who are desperate and are emotionally stressed and like. You know, climate change is not over, and uh, neither are wildfires. Neither are uh, climate change extreme storms. And Hawaii, as other places, will see see a continuation of these these existential threats. Um, and that means that not only will these scammers be looking for you in the in the model, the context of a Maui wildfire, but in every context where the community is disrupted because of a climate change incident episode. Um, so it sounds to me like this is going to continue. And the question I would put to you, Attila, is how can we protect ourselves against the next storm? There will be one, the next fire, the next flood, and so forth. How can we protect ourselves from the scammers who come along with, you know, with the episode? It's it's the same story as today, right? You got to keep your head on your shoulders, use common sense, look out for red flags, look out for things that are pushing you towards action urgently, that kind of stuff. That that is the big red flags for you. And and like you said, this is not our first climate event. It won't be the last. Uh, you know that we saw the same thing in the wake of uh, of the Haiti earthquakes. We saw the same thing in the wake of Katrina, and that was a long time ago <laughs> in terms of climate science, but. Uh, you know, the, these these uh, cyber criminals are going to keep on coming. I mean, I, I think it's really good to focus on, like, what we can do to rebuild, right? Uh, you know, folks are still going to want to be looking for jobs. Uh, and from an employer standpoint, there's all these, uh, that's the flip side of it, right? So uh, the scammers are after those victims that have lost everything and they want to try to squeeze, squeeze them that way. But, you know, what if uh, someone's out looking for a job, they update the LinkedIn profile, and they start to become solicited by a company offering them a work from home opportunity. All they need to do is pay a few thousand dollars to get uh, started with their program, to get the necessary materials they need to work from home, you know, booklets and, you know, they'll send them wires and a small desk or something. That's also a scam. And guess what never comes in the mail, anything. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, those folks that are looking for these jobs, um, are requested to give out all their private information, right? Social security number, bank writing information, all that stuff. So that's another way where they can take advantage of those trying to rebuild their lives after such a, after such a disaster. Now, from an employer's perspective, uh, there are also scams coming in from that direction. Uh, North Korea was famous uh, for adopting a uh, you know the personas of of other like highly qualified people. And uh, then requesting interviews and and pretending to be that highly qualified person so that they could then either do espionage by gaining access to the critical resources of that company uh, or by 
uh, you know, finding another way to siphon more money or hold or extort uh, that company by just getting any sort of access that an employee might uh, and 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 thus you know, destroying that company in the process. So the LinkedIn is is one gateway to those that are trying to rebuild their lives as well as employers who are trying to you know build their own companies and they're getting uh, you, you know compromised in the process. Yeah, you know that's an interesting uh, oblique on all of this. It could be targeted. It's not just somebody that was uh, on Maui might have lost his home, might have lost members of his family, and is distraught and desperate. It could be a targeted victim, the owner of a company, maybe a company that does business with the federal government, uh, a company that uh, has a problem in 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 recouping its staff. Its staff is is gone. And it's got to find new staff. But, um, you know, the notion would be is that just because this scam is, seems to be a broad-based, you know, scam against a, 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 an indistinguishable population, it could be targeted against you because you hold information that this guy wants, maybe for espionage. That's different. Well. All I know is that, you know, it is unfortunate, but most of these cases that, you know, we read about after the fact, for every one that is reported, there's a hundred that don't, uh, that don't make their way up to the news. So, uh, you know, we're trying to get the word out. So those that are being targeted by phone calls, text messages, or anything that's requesting a sense of urgency, uh, anything where they're asking for money for a service in exchange for a service, those are most likely scammers. And for those that are trying to rebuild their lives, and if there are opportunities online uh, that recruiters maybe reach out to them, uh, there are scams in that direction as well. You should always research the company itself, make sure that it is a valid uh, organization. Uh, unfortunately, Money mules are recruited in this manner. Uh, are you familiar with money mules? Uh, can we talk no, about please that? Please tell me. So let's pretend that a business is hacked, right? And ransomware is deployed, which locks up all of their computers and says, hey, you need to pay us in crypto uh, in order for this to occur. Or there's a check scam or there's any numerous one ways. The money doesn't go from point A to point B directly. It goes through a series of money mules. Uh, and those money mules each take a portion of those funds and it goes from one bank account to the next to the next. We've seen this firsthand from uh, invoice scams. Uh, so that what, you know, this has happened in about three or four different companies just recently uh, where they access the email of the president or CEO and uh, they generate a fictitious uh, invoice and say, hey, look, I'd like you to pay this invoice, wire this money to this bank account. Wonderful, right? Simple, easy, but it's wrong. <laughs> and that money goes to one bank account, which then instantly jumps to another bank account and jumps and jumps and jumps. And that can go up to 24 to 50 different bank accounts before it finally ends up at its final destination which can be in any number of bad places. <clears throat> now, each of those jumps along the chain requires a money mule. And those money mules are often by unsuspecting victims of those who are duped into having a work from home job. Uh, in the past, when law enforcement has gone to those people and said, hey, look, you are a money mule, they are completely bewildered. They've been fooled into believing that they're doing a legitimate job. They're being paid uh, for just moving money from point A to point B. Uh, they don't ask a lot of questions. And, uh, you know, oftentimes they're they're unwitting victims in a in this whole, you know, network of evil. So in that same vein, like you don't want to become that person yourself. So be careful of these kind of too good to be true um you know, types of, of things because it's 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 going to come back to bite you. And I'm sure they're going to target Maui victims. Well, sure, who are desperate. Uh, one other thing comes out of that is uh, 
you know, if a guy says to me, look, I, um, I'll get you a job or I'll get you an employee or I'll get you some federal benefits, I'll get you FEMA benefits, but you have to give me a couple of thousand dollars. And you could say, I'm just testing on this, you could say, sure, um, uh, you want my credit card? Let me give you my credit card number. Uh, let me give you, you know, all that you need to take this out of my credit card. Once he uses that information to take it out of the credit card, we have a handle on him, don't we? Um, because now we know who drew the money out of the credit card account. It's not so simple as uh, gift cards or, or, or cryptocurrency um, because there's a, there's a paper trail with a credit card, right? Yes, which is why they usually don't ask for that. <laughs> okay. Well, then that's a way to test the situation where you say to him, okay, sure, let me give you my credit card information. And then yeah. if he balks, you know you have a, um, you know, you have a, you have a, a, a point of suspicion. You know, the, the best, the best thing to do is, is make sure you, if you are on Maui and you are a victim, that you work with local uh, you know, on present, uh, you know, on premise, you know, physical uh, resources that are there, and uh, you know, the Red Cross and and uh, <laughs> you know, numerous other uh, you know nonprofits are out there. As Maui United Way, uh, they they are all there with the most current, up to date resources on how to solve these kind of problems. And you know, just know that you're not alone uh, on. On the outer islands, we are doing our what we can to try to help, and uh, you know the same comes from every other part of the world. So, uh, I I don't believe that you know the scammers are going to win against this one because there's so much uh, public uh, support and help and assistance uh, that uh, you know <laughs> just accept it and 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 try to work personally. And and I do know that there's a little bit of a you know bit of pride about, you know, being able to do this on your own, but uh, in the same vein, uh, you're, you're not alone. And uh, if you let others help you, you can pay it forward uh, once you get back on your feet. Yeah. Well, one thing that strikes me is, uh, you know, in a, in a recovery situation such as on Maui, where people are all struggling to get back to some nor nor normal life, uh, and, and that includes the agencies, it includes the police and the county, it includes um, you know public officials from one side to the other. So if if you or me, we should call them and say, look, I, I have a very suspicious situation in here. I'd like to report it to you and see if you can do anything about catching the bugger. Um, they may well, I can imagine this, they may well say, hey, uh, look, Attila, we're busy. We really can't address this right now. So what happens when you reach that kind of mm, lack lack of response, well, in the end, you know, all of this is on you. But in the same way, you know, there there are some there are some resources out there. Now, what I, you know, if you guys run into a dead end, you know, feel free to reach out. Maybe we can help out with something. Our phone number is always available. It's a local number eight zero eight eight six one ninety five ninety five. But uh, you know, I, I think, Jay, you know, one thing that you and I can do and, and maybe spread the word on this one is to encourage tourism back to Maui. Uh, the Most of the island is open. Yes, uh, West Maui is, is has its own challenges, but uh, the island does depend heavily on tourism. And, uh, you know, uh, the airfares are, are pretty low. We've got some tickets just today. And, and uh, you know, we're, we go there to help clients uh, that are that we have on Maui. And, uh, you know, they're, they're very affordable and, uh, you know, the hotels are open and, and the restaurants are open and, you know, I encourage folks to go visit and, and, uh, help support that economy. Yeah. And, and more than that, um, so we, we learned a lot about, you know, preventing the damage that we experienced in the, in the wildfire and, uh, subsequent climate change kinds of events. Um, and we have to use those lessons and we have to rebuild smarter. And one of the ways to rebuild smarter is to rebuild smarter where you can be aware of these scams 
uh, both in times of stress and in, in the normal times. And so we need to learn at every level when we rebuild. Well, you're right, Jay. Hopefully we can rebuild, uh, you know, rebuild quickly. There you go. Attila S. SIPAC, helping in the rebuild. Thank you so much, Attila, for joining us today. Appreciate it, Jay. Stay safe out there. Aloha.